Good afternoon. My name is uh, Dr. Stefanos Bukovalas, and uh, I would like to welcome everybody to our Facebook Live. Today, I will be talking to you about lymphedema. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I was trained in Philadelphia and uh, Texas, Galveston, and Houston. And then I pursued uh, uh, microsurgery and complex reconstructive uh, uh, micro, uh, fellowship at MD Anderson Cancer Center um, in Houston, Texas. And uh, my wife and I uh, moved to Knoxville uh, a little less than a year ago. And I've been with uh, UT Medical Center since then. We really, really uh, love being part of this wonderful community. First question, Dr. Bukovalis, is what is lymphedema? In a nutshell, um, the best way to describe it is swelling that affects most commonly the upper or lower extremity due to accumulation of fluid. You see, the body has a very sophisticated and extensive network. It's like a plumbing uh, system that really helps um, basically remove and filter um, excess fluid that might be floating around between the cells and under the skin, and it's comprised of little very fine uh, vessels which we call the, the lymphatic vessels or lymphatic channels and lymph nodes and uh, this is the lymphatic system when there is a blockage or a malfunction in this system then there is difficulty in the drainage of the fluid from the extremities back to the heart and that's when the lymphedema occurs with swelling and other symptoms right so what are some of the signs and symptoms then of lymphedema? Most commonly patients will complain of swelling, which is probably the number one and most common uh, symptom. Um, other patients will complain of heaviness in the affected extremity. Um, they have difficulty in fitting in clothes. Um, they have difficulty wearing their jewelry, especially if we're talking about lymphedema affecting the hand, or the upper extremities. Um, and many patients may have difficulty with daily activities, range of motion. Now, because of the consistency of the fluid that accumulates in the arms and um, the legs, um, which is rich in protein, um, these patients are also prone to skin infections that in fact can be very severe, requiring hospitalization and uh, IV antibiotics, et cetera. Gotcha. So what about, how do you treat um, lymphedema here at UT Medical Center, maybe talk about the, the approach. Absolutely. Before, um, I, I think I would, it would be important to say that um, the most common cause of lymphedema um, here in the United States is cancer treatments. Uh, because of surgical removal of the lymph nodes as part of the cancer care, um, radiation therapy, and even some chemotherapy agents. Um, some less common causes include birth de defects um, and other conditions, infections or trauma and injury. The reason why I say that is because um, you will see why we're targeting lymphedema uh, that is related to cancer treatments and uh, this is going to be our primary focus um, initially at least uh, in our uh, multidisciplinary uh, team here at UT Medical Center. Um, the important thing that I would like everybody to understand is that lymphedema is a very complex condition. Um, we don't have the cure, unfortunately. However, um, we have many ways that we can help actually patients control their symptoms, improve their quality of life, and decrease their rates of infection and just improve their well being. Um, one person cannot treat lymphedema. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I would like to really highlight the word team. Um, we're building a team uh, with different disciplines and specialists that will contribute with their expertise and will bring on the table um, their knowledge and what they can offer for patients that have lymphedema. And really, um, I think the key is really building a team of experts from different specialties mm -hmm. that are dedicated in uh, the care of the patients and really focus on pr prevention, diagnosis, and then treatment, of course. That's just fine. to give you an example, I'm sorry, uh, just to give you an example, uh, in, our, in our center, um, we have members from the surgical oncology group, um, plastic and reconstructive surgery, physical therapy, rehabilitation services, um, radiation oncology, medical oncology, 
diagnostic interventional radiology vascular surgery. So you can imagine how um, this is obviously not an easy um, problem to fix, but mm -hmm. we do have the resources and we have the expertise now to really help these patients. It's wonderful. And so you said it's not an easy problem to fix, um, but you have this team. Um, but maybe talk about the treatment options. I know it's kind of, it's two main areas, right? Surgical and non-surgical. Absolutely. And I will say early identification helps with better, um, I guess, results of any of the treatments that we have available. So accurate diagnosis and early detection of the patients with clinical or even subclinical lymphedema referring to patients that may not even have swelling yet, but the disease is already there and starts kind of progressing without even patients knowing about it. I think this is key. And we now have state-of-the-art equipment that can provide very, very vital information to really establish the diagnosis early on. So now let's go back to uh, treatment options. Well, for many years, the surgical options were very morbid and basically we're limited to literally excising and removing surgically big, large areas of skin and, and soft tissue. Um, so the mainstay therapy actually for many, many years has been non-surgical. And in many cases, this can be actually enough to control patient symptoms, especially with early stages or mild lymphedema. And uh, here at UD Medical Center, we have really an excellent group of experts. We have our uh, team with uh, lymphedema certified physical therapists that provide a variety of non-surgical treatments which um, include compression with garments or bandages, um, pumps that patients can use at home, um, manual lymphatic drainage that takes place here in clinic or we can refer patients as well to um, you know facilities that might be closer to their uh, their home and uh, of course exercises that we can teach the patients to do by themselves, which will help with range of motion, um, drainage of the fluid from the extremity, etc. etc. Um, now, I'm very excited to uh, share with you that um, myself and one of my partners, Dr. Jesse Smith, that uh, recently also became part of our family, UTMC family. Um, we offer some really pioneering procedures, surgical procedures at, at this point that um, I think has revolutionized the way we actually treat and approach lymphedema treatment. And what I tell my patients, and I think it's uh, uh, probably an easier way to understand uh, because lymphedema by itself is a very complex problem. So trying mm -hmm. to explain also how we operate to fix lymphedema might be even more complicated. So. I want people to think of lymphedema uh, with the analogy of having really a traffic jam on the highway mm -hmm. because there is a roadblock or the toll station is down. Um, I was about to bring up I-40, but I realized that I haven't seen any toll stations. Um, but for the sake of the analogy, let's think there is a toll station that is damaged and the cars cannot go through. Well, then we have buildup of traffic. And how do we fix that? Well, we can either redirect the circulation or the traffic through the feeder road by passing basically the roadblock or the obstruction. Um, or we can actually bring in the team of mechanics and experts that will repair the toll station, reestablish the traffic through the highway. So the same concepts, interestingly enough, apply in lymphedema surgery. Um, the first procedure that we offer um, really entails identifying with very, very high end uh, high power magnification and high tech, uh, I guess, devices, find the lymphatic channels that are blocked and then divide them and reconnect them with a nearby little vein. And what that achieves is that now we have rerouted basically the blocked um, lymphatic system to a nearby vein. And this way we have allowed now all this accumulated fluid to find an outflow through the venous system to go back to the heart. And this is a minimally invasive technique. Um, it's being done through very, very small incisions, less than an inch long. And um, of course it requires a lot of 
technical skills and expertise, um, but the recovery is very easy and um, it's called the lymphovenous bypass or lymphatico venous bypass, the bypass procedures. Um, so which, which can be very effective. Um, the second very important uh, procedure um, that we offer is, again, going back to the analogy of uh, the roadblock and I guess repairing the actual toll station that is down, um, we find actually lymph nodes uh, from one part of the body that we can spare and we can transfer them and transplant them in the extremity or the area where lymphedema has occurred. And what happens next is that these lymph nodes will recanalize and re will reconnect with the local lymphatic channels. Um, and uh, this way they will function as little pumps or filters that will start pulling the fluid from the extremity and propelling and pushing it back to the heart. Um, and that's what we call the vascularized lymph node transfer. Um, not every patient will be a candidate for these procedures, but that's why we have, we bring the expertise and we have, um, we'll, we'll perform several tests to see which patient would benefit actually from these procedures, but um, we certainly now have the ability to offer these surgeries to our patients. Um, for patients that might not be good candidates um, for uh, various reasons, um, we may still be able to help surgically. And um, I, I try to avoid direct excision of tissue like we used to do um, a long time ago, but actually liposuction can be very helpful. And of course you will say, yeah, you're a plastic surgeon, you wanna do liposuction. How does this help lymphedema? Well, I think that um, an easy way to understand that is, um, especially with more advanced lymphedema, um, there's a lot of protein that irritates the tissues and creates inflammation. So um, what happens is that you see that some patients, um, their skin becomes thicker, the tissues become more firm, and slowly with time, the excess fluid is being replaced by fat cells and fibrosis, scar tissue. Um, with liposuction, what we do is we don't really improve the function of the lymphatic system itself. Um, so we don't really address, um, I guess, um, the roadblock or the blocked uh, lymphatic channels. However, um, what we achieve is that we remove excess fluid, we remove uh, fat cells, and we break down the scar, which sometimes, actually, many times we have um, pretty significant improvement in patient symptoms um, as the overall volume of the limb, um, um, I guess, goes down. And um, that sometimes by decreasing the pressure in the tissues and breaking down this scar actually helps with the uh, lymphatic function as well. So um, even though liposuction has been um, thought to have only temporary results, now we know that in some patients may have um, permanent results and uh, it's definitely worth considering and uh, keep it in our urban term, you know, in our, um, I guess, um, options for uh, surgical uh, treatment. Wonderful. Um, you had mentioned, I want to go back for a second, you mentioned early detection is key. So maybe spend a little time, what are some things that you would encourage somebody to, to, to contact you or your team about if they're, they're seen or, you know, what are some things that might be happening for somebody to need to get checked out? That's a great question, Lance. Thank you very much. I, I think that this refers to not only the patient, but also um, physicians in the community that um, um, take care of patients that have undergoing treatments uh, for cancer with lymph node resection, radiation, chemotherapy, or may have other types of lymphedema. Um, we talked about the symptoms that patients should look for. Mm -hmm. I think that exactly because early identification is key and very critical, I think patients should have a very, very low threshold to really reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Because now um, we have really state-of-the-art equipment that can measure circumference, volume, but also the amount of fluid that is under the skin and we can't even see with bare, with naked eye. Mm -hmm. So we can very accurately collect all that information and really establish a diagnosis. Sometimes it might not be lymphedema. 
might be something else that is causing swelling. And in these cases, we then refer patients to the appropriate um, service that will be uh, taking care of these patients. But um, I would encourage patients that have any symptoms, um, especially after cancer care, um, and it doesn't need to be only breast. Um, any type of uh, lymph node surgery, um, radiation, and some chemotherapy agents can actually cause lymphedema. And uh, I think um, our job as well is to um, make our center approachable and open to patients and referring physicians to really establish the right pathways to get patients in and really see what we can um, offer to them. Wonderful. So then what are the, the next steps if somebody wants to contact you or your team? Well, we have, we have put a lot of effort with the uh, with, uh, University of Tennessee Medical Center and particularly the Cancer Institute. As we discussed, the number one cause of lymphedema in the United States is cancer care. So as you can imagine, the Cancer Institute has been really uh, pushing hard to really establish that our multidisciplinary comprehensive center. Um, we're very, very close to launch our webpage, and I'm very excited to announce that um, there's going to be a lot of educational material, um, and uh, most importantly, there's going to be a hotline, a phone number that patients and referring physicians will be able to call and um, basically get directly connected to our designated lymphedema coordinator and uh, then get appropriate guidance, guidance um, you know, for the next step in their um, lymph lymphedema care. Wonderful. And then one final question before we wrap up, just any concerns, uh, the patients who might be concerned because of the new, the COVID surge that we're experiencing, just any, anything that you can. Uh, that, that's yeah. a, thank you. That, that's a great, that's a great question. I will say our number one priority is the safety of our patients and the safety of our staff. Um, we are uh, following the CDC guidelines and uh, policies from our institution. However, um, we're still open to evaluate patients. Um, please be in the lookout for our webpage um, when we will announce, uh, um, I guess uh, we open up that phone number, um, then we will be able to get direct referrals. And sometimes um, a consultation or questions uh, that can be answered from the phone uh, can be enough to really put some patients at ease, but um, we are very careful because of COVID, we're monitoring the situation. Um, some of our surgeries have been affected, but we're definitely available to evaluate patients and we look forward to it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. I, I really, I really um, appreciate, thank you for having me here. Um, as a closing, I guess, uh, remark, I would like to say that I'm truly humbled, honored and very, very excited to be a part of this really, really amazing um, group of uh, experts. Um, I really think that there are many patients out there that um, have been suffering of, from lymphedema. And um, I, really, I really believe that um, this program will be um, a great place where we can um, really provide services of the highest standards and hopefully we'll, we'll make one of the uh, um, very few centers of excellence, um, not only in the state, but in the country, but definitely would like to serve our community and the entire region of East Tennessee and uh, surrounding areas. So um, I'm very excited to be here and uh, I'm just uh, really thrilled to not only meet uh, our patients and obviously work with my collaborators um, to help those patients, but also connect with um, all these physicians uh, in the community to really, um, you know, establish a good relationship and uh, really facilitate um, providing our services to these patients.